Item Number SCP-1980 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures As SCP-1980 is immovable, research and containment site 79 has been built surrounding it, under cover of building a neutrino observation telescope. Standard Foundation access restrictions apply. All active examples of SCP-1980-1, whether found within SCP-1980 or elsewhere, are to be transported to Site-41 for containment and experimentation. It is critical that no direct human contact is made with an instance of SCP-1980-1 outside of approved experiments. Any person believed to have been exposed to SCP-1980-1 is henceforth designated an example of SCP-1980-2, and is to be contained and transported to Site-41 for interrogation and forcible removal of SCP-1980-1. After removal of SCP-1980-1, non-D-Class subjects may be given Class A amnestics and released. MTF operatives should be aware that it is possible to internally implant SCP-1980-1 within a subject, producing an example of SCP-1980-2 with no obvious anomalies. SCP-1980-2 specimens may be housed in a standard humanoid containment cell and have no unusual care requirements. SCP-1980-3, the mechanism for creation of additional examples of SCP-1980-1, is currently within SCP-1980. Relocation to Site-41 will be undertaken when possible. By O5 order, SCP-1980-3 is not to be used until such relocation takes place. Biological artifacts SCP-1980-4 and SCP-1980-5 in suspended animation within SCP-1980 are not to be disturbed. If any such items become animate, they should be contained if possible, otherwise terminated. SCP-1980 is a structure located approximately 2.4 km under the Antarctic ice, approximately 400 km from the South Pole at coordinates. Based on the depth at which it was found, SCP-1980 was constructed approximately 14.5 million years ago in one of the last temperate zones on the Antarctic continent. Usage as a scientific research base is presumed based on finding 1. A telescope, apparently fixed for long-term observation of an area of intergalactic space at coordinates. No significant astronomic bodies or activity noted in this area. 2. Approximately 5,000 examples of SCP-1980-1, metallic disc approximately 10 cm in diameter, composed of a tungsten rhenium alloy and partially overlaid with a crystalline structure of unknown composition. Interrogation of SCP-1980-2 subjects indicate that each SCP-1980-1 contains the consciousness of an individual of an unknown sapient race, presumed to be the builders of SCP-1980. Based on the number of SCP-1980-1 found, SCP-1980 is part of a much larger complex or colony. 3. A biological containment area, containing several primitive hominids SCP-1980-4 in suspended animation, as well as an entity SCP-1980-5 closely resembling the description of a within SCP-4. SCP-1980-3 a machine used to create additional examples of SCP-1980-1, based on information gained through interrogating SCP-1980-2 subjects. 5. Records documenting the activities of the inhabitants of SCP-1980. See Addendum 3 for translation of relevant excerpts. A human subject in contact with SCP-1980-1 will have his or her higher mental functions dominated by those of the entity contained within SCP-1980-1. These subjects are designated SCP-1980-2. The process takes approximately six hours, during which the subject is unconscious. Upon awakening, SCP-1980-1 will have control of the subject, and significant access to the subject's knowledge and memories. Removal of SCP-1980-1 negates its effect, leaving the subject physically unharmed but disoriented in a manner resembling the application of amnestics. The degree of disorientation is commensurate with the amount of time exposed to SCP-1980-1. Existing SCP-1980-1 instances contain the consciousness of the builders of SCP-1980. 
However, it is apparently possible to create additional examples of SCP-1980-1 from any sapient being, using SCP-1980-3 and a blank template of SCP-1980-1. 68 such templates were found. The research team working on replicating SCP-963-1 has determined that it is not possible to recreate SCP-1980-3 or SCP-1980-1 templates using current human technology. Addendum 1 SCP-1980 was discovered in 2010, when an automated distress signal activated and was intercepted by Foundation personnel. The signal was traced and the surrounding area contained a Site-79. Extensive hot water drilling has allowed limited access to SCP-1980. The initial research team investigating SCP-1980 was compromised by SCP-1980-1 exposure before the effects of SCP-1980-1 were fully known. Team leader Dr. abandoned his post and removed approximately 500 examples of SCP-1980-1 from the site. Dr. has not been recovered by the Foundation, and it is assumed that there are now a significant number of uncontained instances of SCP-1980-2, with unknown motivations. MTF Zeta-29 is responsible for their ongoing capture and containment. 27 examples of SCP-1980-2 are contained as of 2012, including six intentionally exposed D-Class subjects. Addendum 2 Interviewed Dr. Martin, a member of the original exploration and containment team, and now an instance of SCP-1980-2. Interviewer Dr. Baker Forward. When it was discovered that the exploration team was compromised, all members other than Dr. were successfully contained and interrogated. Begin log. First, let's dispense with the idea that you're unaffected by SCP-1980. We know what SCP-1980-1 does, and we know your team was exposed. Fine. Dr. will complete his mission no matter what I tell you. You can't stop us. Who exactly are us? Our people. We built the place you found. Where are you from? We have nowhere else to go. Was destroyed. This is our home now. And what do you intend to do here? Live. As long as we can. We wear your people because we have to. Were you always like this, wearing others? No. We were once like you, until we had to defend ourselves from… how to say it in your language… those who came from outside. So you were invaded? Yes. By the… and their masters, the… Screamers from beyond. They are why we converted. The Screamers could not see us afterwards. I see. And you were watching in case the invaders came back? Yes. They will. You should convert too. It's the only way to protect yourselves. The process should work. We could help you. We should become like you? Yes. You could wear your own bodies. You would hardly know the difference. I can see the advantages still. You must do it. They will come back. It will be too late then. End log. Closing Statement Subject grew agitated and had regularly tried to convince Foundation personnel to use SCP-1980-3 to convert themselves into instances of SCP-1980-2. Addendum 3 Excerpt from records found in SCP-1980, translated by Subject D-19213 while exposed to an instance of SCP-1980-1. Contact lost with can only assume the worst, hope they were able to convert themselves in time. We watch the access point continually. So far, we are safe here. We were wrong. Are pouring out of the access point. So many. They must plan to hit every Class J planet in this part of the galaxy. There was no escape after all. Convert and prepare. What else can we do? 70% of us lost. Need to find new hosts for the modules. The local life here is incompatible for transfer tried to merge with a captured, knew that wouldn't work. They are too different. One of the last. Our bodies may feed the Screamers, 
but perhaps someone will find our minds.